Hey, it's Larry again. This week we're talking everything electrical outlets. There are actually over 20 tips and tricks and secrets I could tell you about these outlets. Let's start with the most common misconceptions or secrets about outlets. Let's get into it. Let's start with creating J hooks for your terminal screws. You can actually use any circle that you see on the outlet to grab onto that wire, simply bend it into the shape you need, and you've created a J hook. Now, J-hooks over the terminal screws, you always want to make sure you go clockwise. What happens there is when you tighten this down, it will grab onto that wire and it will pull it in tighter. So you go clockwise. If you go opposite of that, it will unwind. Quality outlets have these little grooves. Cheaper outlets are flat in the front. What's going on there? Say you're fumbling around trying to plug something in. If it's flat, sometimes you might miss. Believe it or not, they're thinking about you. They put grooves there to make it easier to kind of align them right in every time. Another feature is polarized plugs. Look closely, there's a long slot and a short slot. What's going on there? The long slot is the neutral power side and the short slot is the hot power side. Now, a unpolarized plug will be the same on each side and it won't matter what direction you plug that in. However, a polarized plug, many appliances, most of them probably are polarized, has the wide slot and the short slot. In this scenario, you actually can't plug it in backwards. They want the hot to be on one side, and that controls safety and switching and things like that. So you can only plug it in one direction. Now this is a, a little bit of a cheaper outlet here. This is about a 50 cent to $1 outlet. When you look at the ground screw, it's connected to the tab here, but in a very weak way. And I have no idea if it actually continues continuity up to the top tab. I believe it doesn't. Let's look at some more expensive ones. Okay, these two, these are more expensive outlets. They have a bonding clamp on the whole back side of the outlet. So on these examples, let me show you this one. This is only a few dollars more for a quality outlet. When you ground to the ground side here, it actually grounds the entire metal housing back here, both tabs, and when you screw it into the box, the entire box would become grounded if it's a metal box. Now this feature is by the grounding screw. It's not on every single outlet, but sometimes I see it with a good quality outlet. If you look closely, there's a little hole right there by the ground screw. That will enable you to stick your ground wire in and wrap it right around the ground screw. Now when you tighten that down, it is securely fastened. The next tip, by just looking at the front of outlets, you can actually tell if they're 15 amps rated or 20 amps rated. Right there, that horizontal cross piece, if it has that extra look to it for your plug, that is a 20 amp rated circuit. And this style is always a 15 amp rated circuit. You can read the additional fine print on the back and it'll tell you for sure. Another hidden feature are these mounting tabs here. When you screw into a box, Sometimes the outlet will not sit flush. These tabs are designed to fit flush with the finish wall. Now, the outlet might be indented too far or stick out too far, depending on your application. A lot of times what will happen is somebody will install like a backer board or a tile backsplash in the kitchen. The wall gets much thicker and then the outlets will need to be adjusted. So let me show you a tip. If you look closely, they actually have these little slots, these little grooves. So what you can do is you can take pliers and you can bend right on those tabs. So in this case, by bending it down, when you screw that into a box, it will make the outlet stick out and be more proud, and uh, you can adjust the depth that way. Or you can actually just snap them off altogether. Look at that. If you're taking the tabs off altogether, that might be a good application for a metal box where you don't need the tabs at all. All right, another little piece of advice. These screws. They are machine screws, six thirty seconds in size. They come with this handy dandy little washer piece so they don't fall out and get lost. Now when you screw them into a box, you may find that they're either too long or too short. Now if they're too short, we showed you last week that you can actually use wire strippers with the screw cutter feature, six thirty seconds of an inch. It'll screw right in there. You can cut them short or if you need longer ones, just back them out and go to the home improvement store and buy machine screws, six thirty seconds of an inch, and they will work fine in all your electrical boxes. The only advantage of these factory built ones is if you look carefully, they do have kind of a bullnose 
end to them there, so it makes it easier to find the hole in the box. But any six thirty seconds machine screw will work. The next tip is a strip gauge. So a strip gauge. Flip your outlets over. Look at this funny little shape right there. There's another one right here. Uh, there's another one right here. So what they're telling you is that's the depth they want you to strip the wire to. You can check here on the strip gauge. You can check here on the strip gauge. It's a neat feature. It's a quick, easy way to see if you remove the right amount of insulator so you have your exposed wire. That will help with wrapping the J-hook around the screw or the quick connector or the side connector. The next tip is backstabbing or backwiring. Look at these four tiny little holes. What are they for? They are for sticking your wire in there if you don't want to use the screw terminals. Now they are only rated for and will only work with the smaller 14 gauge wire, which is small residential wiring. If you have the thicker, which we have here, 12 gauge wiring, they actually will not fit. They're not rated for it. They will not fit in that hole. So you would just in this one do a J hook around the terminal screw. Now, if you upgrade to better outlets, you don't have to worry about the J hook and the screw. You actually have these little pressure plates. That makes your life a lot easier. With the side wiring option, you do not have to bend the wire at all. They can just be straight in under the pressure plates, and then when you tighten them on down, you are good to go. So in this application, you can put two wires per plate. So that's four wires total. Look at that, four wires total. You don't have that option with, with the cheap 50 cent dollar item uh, outlet. Here you can only do two wires per side, whereas the quality outlets, you can do four wires per side. Now, if you do the backstabbing method and you're saving time or whatever, and you stick that wire in there, it's a pretty good connection. It's just not as good as the screws, but it does work. There are millions of homes in America right now with that exact same option. However, before you put it back in the box and fold it up to use it, don't leave these screws sticking out like that. They come stuck out per the manufacturer. Don't leave them sticking out. Take the extra time. It's worth the quality to screw them all back in because when you push the outlet back into a busy crowded box like this, if the screws are sticking out, that's more of a chance it's going to touch something metal and short out on something. So screw them all the way in for extra little bit of attention uh, protection. You could wrap them with electrical tape. All right, another tip. These are called duplex outlets. Duplex. They have two outlets. They don't have one. And if you look on the side, what the heck is that tab there? There's a little plate of metal there, a little tab. It's connecting the upper outlet and the lower outlet. So when you wire them, it won't matter which screw terminal you use, you will have both outlets hot. You might have an application where you want to actually take pliers and you're going to grab that plate and you're actually just going to snap it right off. So now what we've done there is we've isolated the top outlet from the bottom outlet. They are separated. The good application for this is you could have, for instance, the bottom outlet hot with your circuit, and you could have the top outlet tied to a switch for like a lamp application or something like that. So now you have two completely separate circuits. Now, if you watched any of my videos, you already know this one. Color coding. Gold screws means black wire, or you could say brass. B for brass, B for black. The silver is the white wire or the neutral. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks about electrical outlets. If I left anything off the list that you would have included, please let me know in the comments down below. I will respond to all the comments. We told you a few weeks ago not to buy the cheap 50 cent or $1 outlets. Make sure you're upgrading to at least the 3 to $5 range for quality outlets. They are built better. We've literally cut into them, guys. We've looked at the inside of the outlets. They do make a difference. Don't buy the cheap ones. Let's spend a little bit more. Three to five dollar range is a perfect sweet spot for a super quality outlet. This is a name brand one called Eaton. And then you can upgrade more expensive beyond that. Hey, I bet you can do this yourself.